Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, in this session, uh, we will present Domino Project, which is uh, part of the OPNFE. Uh, my name is Ulaş Kozat. I am the PTL of the Domino Project. I also work at Huawei. And my colleague, uh, Prakash Ramchandran, do you want to introduce yourself? OK. I, okay. <laughs> uh, so good afternoon. And uh, uh, I am Prakash Ramchandran. Uh, of course, my amigo here, Ulash, already handed to me. So I am the chair of the MANO work group for OPNFE and trying to organize uh, the MANO aspects uh, as we move up the stack in OPNFE. And the topic here here is about the template distribution services. And I also work for FutureY, which is a uh, Huawei R&D in USA. So we divide the presentation in three parts. In the first part, Prakash will take over, and he will basically set the stage for the use cases and motivational uh, things for Domino project. And then he will pass the ball to me, and I will do a couple of slides on, you know, under the hood what we do within the project. And then we will also have a demo, uh, which lasts about eight minutes, uh, so that you can see in action uh, what we deliver, basically. Um, sure. So why don't you take over, Prakash? Thank you. Thank you, Lash. And so what I'll do is I will start. Uh, of course, we want to know, as usual, we want to know what the pain points are. But before I come to that, I would like to see at least uh, what is happening in the space. So what you see here, uh, you can see here, this is the VIM, which is the virtualized infrastructure. And we are in OpenStack Summit. So OpenStack, actually, for uh, us sits here inside this virtualized infrastructure manager box, along with the SDN controller, which is a bit different uh, in the sense that we always talk of Neutron in OpenStack, but we have underneath uh, the SDN controller, which could be a ONOS or a ODL. So that's the VIM portion. And we are talking of HCNFE architecture mapped here. And so after the VIM, the next thing, in the first phase in OPNFE, what was done was this was the priority in OPNFE Arno, which is the first release of uh, OPNFE. The second was Brahmaputra. And in all of these, we just focused on this and the virtual infrastructure layer itself, NFEI, what is the infrastructure? And the virtualization of it is here. And now, as the MANO evolves, the management and network orchestration evolves up the stack. We have moved to VNF manager. And this VNF manager is the one which manages the life cycle of the VNFs, which is the services. You provide services by composing VNFs. And above that is the NFE orchestration, which is the one which tells what do I orchestrate for which use case. And Above that comes the actual uh, OSS BSS. So if you look at the end users, the BSS, the OSS, which are nothing that business support services and then uh, orchestration services, all that the end user wants comes through the dashboard. And they look at service catalog, as you see, and then try to orchestrate a given service. Example of a service is VCP, as you saw in earlier session, and then VIMS. So these are some of the standard use cases, both for the fixed and mobile network, which need to be orchestrated. And they always run through this orchestrator. So these are all the standard interfaces, as you can see. So what the idea behind this is that any VNF managed by any element manager uh, is uh, driven by the OSS, BSS through the services that are available and orchestrated through NFEO to VNF to VIM and then actual infrastructure is here. So this is called NFEI POPs. You can distribute it across. Vim, you can distribute across. VNF manager, you can distribute across. So can you do NFEO, then what's the logical view? The logical view is always coming from the service orchestration at the top, which is the global service orchestrator. In general, we call it. So this is the evolving stack out of which NF, OPNFE has started building bottom up. That means it has started with VIM, which is 
our infrastructure as a service open stack which is sitting inside this now we are moving up now what is the pain point when we move up there is a pain point even when we were there at, at vim level we had pain points so what is that template distribution needs to address and what's our pain point so i'll focus on now our pain point and our pain points are you can see the mano space mano space is littered with just projects and projects and pocs and pocs and modules so the question is how do we handle it so we have got at&t they want their ecom we have opono china mobile wants opono then we have telefonica which wants open source mano so everybody wants to do mano means management and orchestration of their network and not only that they want to do most of them through open stack which is a positive sign at least we have something common but when we do that then the issue comes down to how do we do we have a standard vnf that is the network functions virtualized network function which we provide are they standard is there a standard format how do i describe it how do i onboard it how do i instantiate it so how how does this all happen so there are two views one view is modeling view which is graphical oh everybody likes to be cool drag and drop and that's all and it will start running like uh, uh, nobody's business but that doesn't happen unfortunately because you need to build the software it's evolutionary it's not revolutionary just like drag and drop you do so the first way to describe it is through some kind of uh, domain specific language we call it dsl now what are the domain specifics so there are many languages so you can see here specifically i'll point here tosca tosca is one of them which is uh, cloud applications so if you describe the topology topology service for cloud application that is tosca that's a domain specific language you describe in some descriptive way and that descriptive way we already had like for w3 we had uh, X, uh, what do you call html then html 1 2 3 4 5 then you had xml so when you serialize the data and describe it you can describe it in several ways and in this case it happens to be tosca for application for cloud application there is another way of if you, that is the case how do you render it how do you really put it so you can put it in json format you can put it in a yaml so there are many many ways of rendering or showing it the reason is serialization the important thing is serialization if i talk about tosca that's one of them so now you can see that there are so many why did i say the mano space is crowded you can see tacker tacker is a open stack project they want to do it the uh, vnf orchestration then there is juju which is there used by the open mano open source mano then there is opono which wants to use both juju and tacker as a vnf manager they want to build the nfv orchestrator and so to build all this you need some way to describe it so our pain point is how do i describe it and if i have a distributed system how do i distribute it so this is a pain point but this is just one of them i will show you now what is there in the market and that's the bigger pain point so here i go to the next one and oh, sorry i think i went far ahead sorry yeah here so when i say template there are so many ways of orchestrating so there is one tosca which is the one i described which is a oas standard so there are many standards if i use openstack heat we have resource we described by heat orchestration template so you got hot if i use uh, ietf standard then i have got yang yang is a modeling tool now each one has a specific market requirement it fulfills like example tosca is for service orchestration hot heat is for open stack resource orchestration you got resource uh, flavor which you describe like so much of memory so much low medium high flavor etc so that is the one yang similarly is more suitable for network orchestration you can describe network then you go to uml uml schema is used for application modeling so uh, from good old days from your java and you, you always used to use uml because that's how we describe from the good old days 
and UML also has evolved. Then there is a common information model, which is nothing but uh, one of the open flow switching model. In, when you describe the flow, and how do you describe? So that is a common information model. Then you've got uh, UML2, which is nothing but uh, there is Eclipse uh, modeling framework technology, EMFT, which is part of another Java. Uh, they, they have got a UML2 way of formatting. And they use UML2 schema, which is nothing but UML with some constraint being added to it. So that's one of the ways. Then if you go to Kubernetes, the containers, they have got their own templating of pod and task and services. So that has evolved. And they use YAML. So that orchestrates the uh, Kubernetes controllers. So you use that template to build the replication and all this. Then you got the good old Ansible and Salt. Both of them use Jinja2 templates. And they have their way of, again, uh, having the template with some kind of a embedded uh, codes, which are called, in this case, playbooks. There it is called master and minion, which is the master. Some of them are even masterless. Minions is nothing but agents. Then you got another bunch of two tools which are very popular, Puppet and Chef. And obviously, Chef is based on the Ruby, and the Puppet is based on the uh, scripts, which also uses Ruby and can use shell scripts. So then there are called EPP and ERB templates. That is Puppet and Ruby templates embedded there. E stands for embedded. So you embed it into the cookbooks, they call it. So everybody has got a different name. One has playbook, one has cookbook, one has mini and master, and then others have their own. So there are plethora of standards. So with all this confusion, even if I say, OK, I don't want to drag and drop. I will just use some template. Which template should I use? Why should I use? And what is that we are trying to do? So the basic problem for us in OpenFE is service. Service is described in terms of some VNFs, some combination of VNFs, network functions. Network functions are nothing but middle boxes like the firewall, the NAND, the DPI, and whatever. We, there is the network function. Virtual is they are virtualized. And sometimes you want to even disaggregate. So there are, there are plenty of problems now. To describe all these in terms of descriptors and trying to solve the problem leads to many a problem. And that's what I will continue on that. So here we go. Um, we have got the use case. I'll throw two use cases at the floor for describing the problems. You have seen that we can describe, but then how do we really use it for a given use case? So the use case in this case, this is a special use case. So if you say the speed of light, uh, you describe 3 into 10 raised to 8 meters per second, and you have Oh, this is one second. So if I say one millisecond, what do I divide by 1,000? Uh, then I have got, I describe in terms of kilometers. So then again, 1,000 I can. So it's around 300 kilometer is the coverage. If you go at the light speed, you can cover in one millisecond around 300 kilometer, right? But then if you go with a fiber, then you can, it covers around 200 kilometer radius. So we are describing the speed at which the, uh, the wave or the content or any signal that moves. Now, if you have a fiber, then it is two-way, then you can go 100 kilometers. So basically, what it means is, if you have a cloud, as you point C here, if it has a radius of 100 kilometers, if you take diameter, it's 200 kilometers. So if you want something in one millisecond, which is what 5G is targeting for a latency, you cannot really go more than that many kilometers. That's your limit. Even at the best of best, you can only do that because, because of the limitations of the fiber, limitations of. So how do we make this happen? And especially if you have, there are multiple things. One is cloud. Cloud is distributed. So you've got a yellow cloud. You've got a, uh, what you call, violet cloud here, white cloud. And you can think of domain in different ways. Domain is overused term. If I say domain, what do I understand by domain? I will say domain is security domain. Somebody will say it's an infrastructure domain. Whatever you conclude, important thing is if I have multiple identities, then I am talking about security domain. So I mean yellow is one security, violet is one security. They are one tenant. In OpenStack term, you call it tenants. So if you have multiple tenants, multiple domains, 
and then uh, if I have to have a function which is being firewall with a distributed one part of here and one part in the other cloud, then how do I ensure that the latency is minimized? We already have a distance and a physics law of light use tells you that you cannot do more than 200, 100 kilometer here. So that is one aspect of it. And to add to that the identity to check, that means you are further delaying it. Same way if you have heterogeneous resource. I may be talking of a resource which is only compute. I may be talking of storage or I may be talking of network. So all this means that you have got to describe all types of domains like who is the owner of it, how is the compute storage described, in what unit it is described, is it one kilo, one kilo of my, or one mega or one giga and how unit of measure etc. So you have to describe all that to somebody to be able to orchestrate for a geographically distributed network functions or virtual network functions. So that means if one place it fails, it is going to fail all through. And so it has a domino effect. Essentially what we are trying to do is how do we address this using uh, these uh, problems that cause a function to be not done within a particular constraint like latency. So that's the key problem for geographically distributing. So you say zone, okay, we do have, I'm not saying OpenStack doesn't have, you got zone, region, you got uh, what you call bunch of uh, uh, group together, the servers, so NOAA does support all those. And, but then to get the limit, within the limitation, the orchestration within the time frame is a bigger challenge. So how do we address it? That's one thing which I don't know. That is what Ula should bring it to us. So I'll go to the next use case. So geographic distribution of functions is of the cloud. Distributed cloud, if you, have, if you have to distribute the function, yet meet the limitations of latency or bandwidth or whatever, how do you meet that? The second use case, still, again. Still first. Yeah, so, so <laughs> now we have talked about the function. I'm not going to say case two. So still in the, how do I compose it? If I have a VNF made of uh, multiple if I, load balancer requires a load balancing of what? A protocol, okay, then how many places I have to, uh, if it's a web service, then here is a web one, web two, and then here is the load balancer, where do I distribute? So are they in the same geography, different? So composition of service over multiple domains is another challenge. Like in the yellow, if I have one in yellow, one in violet, it's distributed. Now it is in different domains, so the composition becomes difficult. How do I describe the composition? How do I orchestrate it? Because one has to instantiate in yellow cloud, another has to do in violet cloud. How do I do it? So there is a challenge there. And not only that, how do I know that this uh, cloud has got this resource versus the other cloud has got different resource? What's the availability? Uh, if I have something which is, uh, let's say, VMware based, and uh, we have another place where it is, uh, uh, not VMware based, how do I do? OpenStack instance may be different from a VMware instance. So that's one of the keys. So how do I discover the capabilities and how do, the, how do I onboard it? Do I have only one service catalog or I have two or I have five? Are they local? Are they distributed? Are they global? So these are something which needs to be defined. Unless you define, nothing can be done. Then. If something has to move, example, I am having a call and I am moving from one cloud to another cloud, I want my service to have the latency, uh, low latency, so the, my application which is there at one edge should move to the other edge. So somebody has to move it. How do I move it? How do I scale? How do I migrate? How do I make that uh, particular, if I have number of subscribers increase suddenly, okay, this is a debate and that debate has uh, some US debate with huge crowd. How do I get millions or 50 million people to see that video? So the scaling issues, scale up, scale down, migrate. So these are all the pain points which needs to be resolved and hopefully this is what we expect that some service called template service which is supposed to resolve and we'll see how it happens. Next I'll go to the, uh, so use case one we let, have got. Let me use here. Yeah. yeah, use case two. So now we described right now various aspects which were more direct. But when you have, we saw the mano, right? We saw the mano that you can 
describe as a layman i am as i want to use some service i am going to say hey, give me a service which will uh, help me do certain function like i should have be able to talk to my people in india with which is 2000 or 10000 kilometers and i want that to be uh, quality of service should be this and this x and y i should not have any interruption so now the question is how does that happen so that means you are only describing the service abstraction saying that i should be able to make a call with so much quality of service or so much experience qa but then actually how does it translate into physical physical in the sense of what kind of network i need to provide you what kind of memory what kind of how do i do that so there is a gap between uh, orchestration uh, when you describe in abstract term which is called intent so i i can say i want i have i want to have this but unless the intent is translated into something which is realistic for the machine to implement at the lower layer it becomes mini links and plus it also is important that you have different controllers right controllers are evolving all the time controllers in the sense sdn controller as well as your cloud controller so you you have different uh, clouds different controllers and among this maybe the source to destination source is barcelona destination is india now you got a different different cloud in between so how does the api change if you have different apis uh, my cloud in barcelona is spain cloud and it speaks spanish and my cloud in india is uh, hindi speaking so what do you do so there are apis something similar like that so apis are making that if you have different different kinds of domain and different different specification for them starting from abstract to the physical how is it possible for somebody to orchestrate so the issue is domain specific and if the domains themselves keep changing their apis then how do you evolve dynamically to be able to orchestrate it cannot be in the wild west you have to give some hint like when i move from here to another place and if my service has to move then i have to know when i am moving actually how is it related to where i am moving to where from source to where i am going the next what's the difference between the uh, environment there what different cloud it is so if you have different cloud different api then that should be able to still be able to say that when i want to scale i want to scale up and not scale down or if i want to scale out then i have to say i want to scale out and my environment here is happens to be open stack mitaka i am going to have another one there also open stack mitaka because even even within the versions there are differences so to instantiate a vm which will serve me or a vnf which i want to there should be some ability to say that there is some constraint so there must be hints so these are the policies which need to describe that so we have to add some uh, intent cannot even though it is abstract cannot be in wild like unless the support is there for that orchestration you cannot expect that uh, i i am asking for a voice service whereas it video service whereas it only supports voice service how can i get such uh, service from that so that means it you have to indicate hint some more so that is what the use case 2 is and i will just move on to the next one uh, let me use switch yeah so at this one stage second. yeah one second Don't yeah go ahead yeah yeah I think we are pressing at the same time. Yeah. So. Okay. Okay. Go ahead. All you right. press it. Okay. Yeah. So now, now what happens? Now we have seen that there is always a intent is at a high level, and when we want to example, I, I think I already mentioned this scale, scale up and scale down, and you have to give some hint if you want some services to. If you have ten thousand people watching and a hundred fifty thousand people come from different places now, how do you scale out? or if you see that oh the all the debate is over and all people have stopped watching everybody is shutting down then we have to reduce the we don't want to consume our resource right so how to optimize the resource that requires a scale in scale out and the controller can be at different level because if you have some templates to describe it unless they give the proper hint just saying scale doesn't mean anything you have to scale up or down and not only scale up and down in what grades 
do you want some small to medium to large or you want only the bandwidth to be uh, bandwidth on demand to be increased and decreased nothing to worry about compute and storage so how do you describe this and which controller and which api will help do this it's a uh, unclear until you provide the proper hint you cannot have an intent just wild intent it has to be supportable intent and that should have been defined if you are doing descriptive it's not it cannot be so dynamic that the system doesn't understand so system should be able to understand and the pain point is how do you make it understand is there a way to do it that's the question then the next at this time i will say yeah i think i should be yeah uh, yeah so this this brings me to a stage where i think uh, i should hand over to uh, the pain points you have seen all right now we want to see what is the solution for all this all this looks wide and i think these are the yeah. critical services we need so prakash basically talked about two use cases one is the geographical distribution uh, so you want to basically orchestrate give one service descriptor that describes everything end to end but we want to onboard different portions of that service component in different domains basically so we want domino to be a one stop shop so you describe the end to end service give it to domino and then domino is supposed to distribute individual portions to individual domains and onboard them uh, the second uh, use case you mentioned was about keeping the api level high level so that we don't basically keep updating drivers continuously instead we template our intent so your high level api is still high level scale out scale down you know set up vnf forwarding graphs change them modify them but uh, you prescribe the set of actions that you expect from the low level controllers in terms of what is the service continuity requirements what type of low level uh, orchestration that needs to be happening so that gap has to be templated so domino also uh, tries to uh, basically address this second issue as well. Um, and uh, since templating is so critical, um, you know, there are a couple of things that has to be uh, happening basically. If you basically provide a single shop where you pass your service descriptor uh, and then we are supposed to distribute to different domains, one thing is we should be able to parse that service. We need to understand what uh, individual components are in that service. Uh, and then we, will, we should be able to map them to individual domains. If individual domains have different template languages that they support, there should be some sort of translation happening. And hopefully nothing should be lost in translation. Uh, and then basically we need to schedule uh, and uh, send those templates to individual domains. Um, so in that aspect, uh, OPNFA has two projects. Domino is mainly uh, interested in uh, partitioning a service descriptor into individual components and distributing them. And Parser project is mainly responsible for uh, checking, verifying uh, whether your template is consistent or not, uh, and uh, translate that. It can be translation from Tosca to Young, Young to Tosca, uh, Tosca to other languages, for example, Kubernetes uh, YAML file. Uh, at this point, they support basically uh, a heat orchestrator, Tosca to hot translation, as well as Young to Tosca translation. Uh, the other two projects in OPNFA uh, are integration projects. Orchestra and Opera project are trying to integrate uh, uh, open mono, open button, and open all projects uh, into the uh, OPNFE platform. Uh, so we have basically both integration projects uh, and the future projects that try to uh, stitch the pieces together. So if you have multiple domains, multiple controllers, multiple orchestrators that you want to integrate on the same platform, uh, we are trying to solve basically on a joint uh, effort basically we are trying to solve this uh, problem of how to integrate and how to combine those uh, different orchestrators together. Uh, so the bottom line is OpenFV Domino is part of a bigger, much bigger uh, mono puzzle, basically. Um, so again, uh, to reiterate, uh, I have a couple of slides. Uh, the first critical thing for us in Domino is to discover capabilities. 
each controller domain should be able to express what they can do uh, for, for network services. And uh, what we do, what, you, what we use for capability discovery is uh, we basically use policy labels. And a policy label, uh, the way we define it is very Tosca specific. Uh, when if you go to a Tosca uh, service descriptor, what you will see is policy types. And you will have property definitions under these policy types. Basically, if you define a rule, you say it is of this policy type. And these are the properties, key value pairs that I want to see as part of that rule. Um, so what we, we take advantage of that policy section of the Tosca file. So if you basically be able to host or want to host a resource, you should be subscribing to those specific labels that themselves has to be uh, input into your Tosca template. Uh, so by, by this way, oh, Domino doesn't interpret what these labels mean. But as long as the orchestrator, different controls and orchestrators agree on those labels and include those labels in the service description, then we can do the matching, which resource can be mapped or matched uh, to what domain. Um, the second thing that we do is any orchestrator, any controller should be able to describe their VNF descriptors or service descriptors and send it to Domino. Uh, and Domino basically, so that is the publishing stage. Uh, and then uh, what Domino does is uh, it creates these individual resource orchestration templates that is specific to individual domains and distributes them. And just uh, to give a hint of, again, I mean, uh, it, will, it will be a, a little bit reiteration of what we do is we start from Tosca. So if you have NFVO or OSS, BSS that describes a service uh, in Tosca template, uh, what we do is we look into two critical sections. The first section is the topology. Topology basically lists the, the node types that you have and their relations with each other, which node is connected to what. OK. So the nodes can be virtual links. Uh, they can be connection points. They can be uh, actual compute units. So once you basically establish that relation, who is connected to who is related to what, basically you are describing a large topology. So we basically look at the topology. We basically extract all the nodes in there. And then we also jump to the policy rules. I mean, there's a policy section in the Tosca. And there are individual rules listed there. And we parse each rule. And we look at uh, what are the uh, nodes that these rules are targeting. And what are the properties listed in that rule. For example, you can have a location rule saying that uh, I want basically uh, this resource to be located in East Coast. So you will have a corresponding label for that. And if you target VNF1, OK, every property that you list in that location rule uh, has to be matching, basically. So for every property value under a rule, uh, we basically define, we extract labels. And in this example, uh, node one, for example, is targeted by two rules. And from these two rules, we basically extract labels X to Y and Z to A. So if a domain wants to host node one, it has to subscribe all these labels. So it has to tell the domino service that I support all these labels. So that becomes a candidate a possible candidate who can host that node type. And the purpose of Domino is basically collect all the labels uh, announced by individual domains and look at which uh, policy rules has to be applied in that service description to what node type uh, and try to basically uh, match uh, these nodes into individual domains. And if there are more than one candidate, if a node type, if a resource can be scheduled in more than one location, we try to basically schedule pack as many resources in the same domain as possible. So we want to use the minimum number of uh, uh, locations uh, or the domains basically to host that network service. So we have also an implicit scheduler uh, within Domino. 
in, in terms of service mapping, as I said, once basically uh, you describe the topology, you know, the, the service descriptor, it can be a quite large topology. If you have two domains that you want to basically send it, uh, what you do is you basically split that uh, graph, topology graph, into two graphs. Uh, and then you are supposed to generate a service template that describe each of those graphs separately and send to these individual domains. And those domains then onboard these descriptors and then instantiate them. Um, so the whole, uh, basically, you know, cycle, uh, you know, from publishing to pushing uh, is shown uh, on this basic slide. Uh, this is what we support in Colorado release. Um, so basically, a client uh, can publish a Tosca file. We extract the labels. We do the domain mapping. We partition the template. Uh, we do the domain translation. Uh, we create a distribution workflow and then send to individual clients. And in doing so, we use two critical libraries. One is the Tosca parser library, and the other is heat translator library, if a, a translation is needed. And if, let me go to the Domino demo. So in the demo, what I will show you is there will be three uh, Domino clients. One of them will be the publisher. It will basically describe a service. Uh, the service is very simple. It is a VNF, actually, that is composed of two VDUs. And they are connected to the same network. Um, and what, uh, uh, what the VDUs, they will have individual policies in that service template. Uh, and those policy rules, one will be the you know, location. Uh, the location policy will say, I want to host this VDU in this particular geographical location versus that other geographical location. And on purpose, basically, we put two different policies uh, for two different regions. And one basically region target, basically one of the resources is targeted for one region. And the other uh, resource is targeted for the other region. And the controllers in those two regions, we are using two different orchestrators. In one region, Tecker is running. OK, it is a one open stack, uh, basically, uh, installation where Tecker is in charge. And the other one, there is only heat engine. There is no Tecker. It's another open stack thing. But two different, basically, orchestrators that understands two different templating languages. So although basically we partition the graph, at the end of the day, Tecker will actually will get a native uh, Tosca file, because it can consume Tosca. And the other domain will get a heat file, hot file. So let me uh, play you the uh, actual video. Uh, it won't be a live demo. Uh, So first step is we start Domino server. Uh, currently, uh, we don't support high availability, so we support only one Domino server. And now uh, we support, uh, we start the Domino clients. Uh, as I said, we basically need to s start three different Domino clients. Uh, one will be the publisher, the other will be the receiver of the service templates. Uh, we started the first one, it is registered, starting the second one. And it is also registered. Uh, as you can see, it is coming from a different IP, so it's a different uh, domain. Um, and uh, the third uh, client starts. That, that will be the publisher, so it can serve as our NFVO, for example, who wants to onboard a, a network service. At this step, the registrations are completed. And in the next step, what we will do is we will uh, do some uh, label subscriptions. Um, let's wait a little bit. I was too lazy, so just basically scrolling up the comments. So client one subscribes to label one. That label one just says, basically, I can host this region, first region, OK? Uh, and as you can see, it's a placement. Tosca policies that placement is the policy type, and it says I support region Nova One. And we go to the second client, and second client basically uh, will itself subscribe for a 
a second label, which basically says I, am, I can support the second region. And by the way, I also support, I understand heat, uh, hot templates, basically. It also specifies that. As you can see, the second uh, client supports heat, uh, and it supports the second region. And in, in this step, basically, we will now publish the third domino agent will be publishing an end-to-end -end service descriptor. And when we go back, we see that uh, one of the both domains, this is domain one, it receives its template file. Domain two receives another template file. These are two different templates. And as you can see, this is a server view. Uh, it does a translation from Tosca to Heat for the second domain. And let's check the files now. Uh, on the client one, uh, basically, we check the first file. As you can see, basically, uh, it is VDU1 is mapped to this domain, and it's a Tosca file. And let's check the other file uh, in the other client. As you can see here, it's a heat template with a particular version that it supports. Uh, and the other one is the Tosca template. And remember, uh, the, these templates are defining, uh, describing two different VDUs. They are not the same VDU, basically. Uh, and the next step, OK, we already distributed. We are done with the distribution. But let's see if we can instantiate uh, those resources in those orchestrators. So let's basically uh, use heat engine uh, in the second domain. And as you can see, um, we are using the OpenStack stack create command for this. Uh, the stack is in progress, the creation. We will check the status of it. And still, the, it is in progress. The creation is in progress. Uh, the second time we will check it, uh, check the status, we will see that uh, it will be created actually. And you see that basically uh, it is already created. Let's check the horizon uh, GUI view. It, if you see the IP address, it ends with .8. Uh, we basically enter the admin console. Basically, we are on the GUI side. We are confirming uh, whether the resource is instantiated or not. On the client side, on the CLI side, it says that it is instantiated. Uh, as you can see, if you can see it, it says VDU2. Uh, so this is the second, basically, uh, part of the VNF is basically created, and it is active uh, for last one minute. And then we go to the other uh, orchestrator, which runs Tekker. So Tekker has a two-stage process. First, basically, you uh, onboard the descriptor. Um, So we are basically the file that we receive is six point YAML. You know, we basically just use the sequence numbers to name the files for now. Um, so we create the VNF descriptor. After that, we can actually launch that VNF descriptor. First, check the ID that is given by Taker. Again, we are looking for the taker command that creates the VNF, VNF create command. We need to pass the right ID that we just copy paste from here. And at this stage, 
we are waiting for Taker to instantiate the uh, VNF descriptor. Basically, it has one VDU, one connection, one port attached to that, and uh, one network. So let's check the status. It says pending. Great. The next time we will check it, it will be active actually. And we will have also the management IP address that is given by Taker to us. The status is active. As you can see, VDU1 at this management IP address is available. Let's ping uh, using that IP address. And as you can see, it is instantiated. We are able to ping it. Um, just to verify on the horizon view uh, what is happening, we are going to take you the, the second machine, which has an IP address ending with seven. So it is a separate one. The previous one, if you remember, was ending with eight. So these are two horizon instances of two different domains, basically. They don't share any resources. And voila, as you can see, uh, the VNF with the test VNF name we created is there. And VDU1 is running uh, on the Taker side, and VDU2 is running on the heat side. All right. So at this point, basically, uh, in Domino, we are able to do this partitioning and splitting, matching, and distribution. Uh, but uh, what the one current assumption we make is if there is a boundary condition, in this case it is, for example, in this graph VL1, we copy that VL1 into both domains. So the actual two templates that we will send to, do, to these two domains will have that VL1 definition included in both networks. So this works fine if VL1 is a public network or if those two domains share the same ID space, so that, that, net, that, that network name ID will, if it is shared between those two, it is not a problem. But if they have under different namespaces, uh, then we have a problem because now our VNF that is supposed to be connected between these VDUs actually will lose that connectivity. So the next step for us in the Domino project is actually create a third template, not just basically split an end-to-end -end service, but also create a third template to stitch these resources that are instantiated in different parts uh, of your uh, overall distributed cloud system. Uh, so we are at this stage. Uh, probably uh, we will look into first ONOS controller. Uh, and we will try to use their L3 VPN implementation for that uh, stitching operation. And I think I pressed two times. Okay. And we will also have some uh, API extensions uh, going forward for release D of the OPNF with Danube release. Uh, we will basically, currently Domino is stateless. If you publish something, we distribute and we forget about it. Uh, but in the next release, basically, we will keep a state. We will assign unique ID addresses to templates. If you want to basically update your service descriptions, you can refer to this ID and we can propagate the new uh, individual resource descriptions of do domains. And if basically we end up scheduling some of those resources to different domains because you change the service description, maybe you updated your policies, then we need to also go ahead and delete and un-onboard some of the descriptors from some domains and migrate them to other domains. Uh, so our, our intention is uh, for release D to be able to have that type of state maintenance and uh, updating all the uh, service descriptions and uh, propagate those changes uh, across multiple regions. And obviously when you have those states, you want to uh, query 
uh, the past templates that you published, uh, you know, you want to able to uh, able to list what you already published in the past. Uh, you want to basic query uh, who received uh, which portion of that template, which orchestrators. Uh, so you want to basically then directly communicate with that uh, particular domain. So this is important for the second use case that we discussed: this high-level API templating. Uh, so you can basically we distribute a template, but you still want to basically these controllers, orchestrators should still communicate with each other directly uh, to basically do some lifecycle management. So Domino is out of the loop in there basically. So we want to also support that type of functionality and get out of the way uh, between the orchestrators. We want to just stay uh, in the template distribution portion and onboarding portion of it, but we don't want to manage the life cycle, which is the functionality of those uh, individual orchestrators. And that sums it up. Um, I don't know if how much time or do we have yeah. time for do questions? We have time for questions? So what? We are out of time, but uh, we are here, so you yeah. can uh, definitely ask questions. Um, and join the force, I will say. The last yeah. message should not be lost. Yeah. Uh, I mean, this is a young project. We started early in March, and definitely we are looking for more use cases, uh, more contributors and committers into the project. Any questions before we wind up? Either you understood everything. Okay. Thank you very much, and uh, thank you for your patience to hear us, and look forward to working with you in future. Thank you.